The pay run is the payroll function within within zero. Let me just remove. Okay, so when you create a pay run, you need to add your employees. Now you can also manage pay items. So let's say, for example, you have deductions. So let's say you've got social contributions. That can be, say, uh, a deduction. And let's say social department. Pay them every month, next payment. So. Okay, so these are my pay items. They can be, you know, your your salaries, your deductions, your loans, all of the things that you, you, you may have in your payroll. If I just go back to pay run. If I select a new pay run, I'll add myself and I'll add a fictitious person. Dave. So my pay frequency is every month. Uh, from and to, let's say June. Now the payment date is very important because if you select the paid date, the accounting for this is on a cash basis, right? So if you if your payroll relates to June and you made the payment in July, it's going to recognize the P&O expense in July. So even though you may have paid it the month later, you have to make sure that the payment date is the same month which you want to recognize the expense. So for this example, I'm going to put the payment date as the 30th of June. I'm going to select next. So here I've got my two employees. I can add more employees as well if I wanted to. And for each employee, I can add other items. So let's say I put my rate is say 2000 and the deduction is let's say 50. So here you can see the wages, the, the deduction and the net pay. I'll do the same for myself. Uh, and I put a contribution of say 500. As you can see, the wages plus the deductions. If I select next, I need to review it. Here you can see a summary of the, the payroll. I can also edit it if I want. I can go back and edit. Here you've got the other payments. So this will go to your bills, which then you can rec uh, reconcile against any payments that you make out. You can put some notes here on the pay slips and you can show the employee's tax numbers on the pay slips as well. So what you can do here is you can add uh, information on pay slips. Once I select approve, then this is now posted to the PL and it needs to be uh, reconciled from the bank. Uh, here you can see the history of all the transactions that all of the actions that were taken. Here you can add notes again. I can send pay slips via email. So I can email it to the relevant people or I can uh, download it in PDF. And then I can send it to my employees separately or I can keep it as records. Uh, if I go back to my pay run, uh, I can attach documents here. So what we do for some of our clients is if we are to run the payroll for my our clients, we would just get an email authorizing that and then we'll just attach it here. So we have the, the relevant information on here. Batch payments. If you wanted to make a payment, let's say you haven't reconciled the bank yet, but you wanted to clear it from your AP, you can do it by making a payment here and then the outstanding balance moves from the AP to the, the wages payable to the bank account because this is, it's, a, it's an unreconciled item. Once you've done a pay run, you don't need to enter all of the information all over, again, all over again. What I can do is I can copy pay run. Uh, let's say it's for July and I select end of July, select next. And here you can see I haven't had to add all of the old information. It's just copied everything across. So once you've entered it for the first time, if it's consistent, then it will add everything for you. If I go to my bills to pay, you can see here, these are outstanding items for John and myself. Now, if you don't have payroll access, this will be hidden. You won't be able to see the person's name. You will be able to see the, the amount, but you won't be able to see the person's name. And then the social security, let's see if I can find it. Waiting payment. Yeah, social department. So here you can see a payable to the social security department or the organization that you have to pay the uh, deductions to it is here as an uh, outstanding AP as well. So that's pay run. Any questions before we move on to? Sure. 
this contribution which can it be a percentage or it has to be a value this deduction you have, you have to put a value you can't put a percentage so you'd have to work it out and then you enter it into into zero okay. is the employee's uh, data saved therefore it's easy to duplicate it for the following months maybe just review it for deductions but then would their uh, data be saved uh, for next month's pay one yeah so I've, I've just shown you that so here you can see I did June and then all I did is copy it and then all the information that I did for the prior month has already been copied. So you can see John Smith and Rayhan, all that information has been, if, it's, if you're paying the same amount every month, that information is copied and that process is very, very quick. The other reason why we like using Payrun is because it posts the payroll journal for you. So it does a debit PL, credit the payable account, uh, which makes it easier for you when you're doing the bank correct and when you're reviewing as well. So if I go to the balance sheet, here you can see the wages payable account. Although the outstanding amount is in bills to pay, which is strictly speaking your AP, zero separates on the balance sheet, zero separates out the AP side of it and the payroll uh, liability side as well.